into a little bit of a recce of my next race, the Ambleside 50k. Um, so Jane is uh, currently doing the Coniston end-to-end swim, so just over five miles continuous swim. So the route passes by that lake, so an opportunity for me to come out and support her. I'll go and meet her at the finish, but also get a little bit of the route record as well. So I'm not sure how far I'm going to get because I've just got a time limit. I need to be back within sort of two hours or so, just so that I can then get a dip in the lake myself before going to meet Jane at the finish line. She's supposed to be taking about three hours for the swim. So yeah, we've got some glorious day. We've got some nice views. Not a too bad of a trail and uh, at the moment I've not seen a single person so I've just done the biggest climb of the whole route so I looked at the elevation profile this was the highest and by the looks of it the most challenging so it took me about 30 minutes to get to the top um, so yeah so I'll just go for a little jog and uh, see how far we get <laughs> route again epic views of some of the higher peaks so this race isn't too crazy in terms of elevation obviously there's some undulation but yeah that was the biggest climb that I've just done kind of going on a pass rather than knocking over a big mountain or anything like that and there's a few other ups and downs as well along the way but so far, looks like a lovely route. For another run. It's been a tough couple of days, not well, today and yesterday, with motivation slash energy in the legs. Uh, I did leg strength session on Tuesday, which beat me up quite a bit, which is expected and that's fine. But then yesterday's eight miler was a real slog. And there, uh, this morning, I tried to come up with every excuse under the sun to not come out today or I could just shift it tomorrow etc etc all the solutions all lead to it being much more inconvenient then than just getting out and doing it now which is obviously where we are now so I just what I did is a compromise just knocked a couple of miles off a couple of miles here or there is not gonna make or break me so I've uh, knocked this down from eight to six and ran straight from the door just to make that a little bit easier and uh, I'm out. Yeah, I'm not sure what's necessarily causing the fatigue other than the leg session. Probably a bit of carryover from last Sunday's long run. So if you remember, I uh, went out for a recce for the Ambleside 50k route. Started off well, kind of went downhill from there. Bit of a 
unexpected change to the, the nav and therefore the route and therefore the distance so and because i was time poor in terms of getting back for jane's swim i um was too much i was focusing too much on the the nav side of things and therefore didn't eat enough so i think there might be some carryover from that on sunday as well so yeah but hey i'm out i'm running I've adjusted my pace so significantly yeah uh, slower than what I normally would but keeping it comfortable times are relevant shake out the legs and then I've got a rest day tomorrow as well like I said it's much more convenient getting it done today it's got a big work day tomorrow so yeah let's uh, see how this goes come up to two miles and uh, yeah, nice day, as always. Trail to the south. Got battered by the rain yesterday. A bit nicer today. So, all in all, can't complain. After recording the video of me out for a run and struggling a little bit with fatigue and therefore the effort of the run, I just thought I'd go over a couple of points in terms of what you should do if something like that occurs and a couple of options for you in terms of troubleshooting that and uh, and obviously a little bit of a, a summary of of where i'm at with my training at the moment so there's going to be times in your training where you may feel a little bit more fatigued than normal now obviously that can be down to just an increase in training load i.e you've done more runs than you have before uh, you've increased the overall weekly volume more than you have before or it could just be that you didn't sleep very well, perhaps the, the weather, such as my example in the video, uh, the, the heat, the humidity might be just adding a little bit more fatigue than you realise, and you may not have compensated for that with extra calories or extra hydration. So if something like that does occur, obviously the first thing you need to do is, is take stock of why it's happening. Don't immediately start to panic and think I'm losing fitness or I'm going backwards because I guarantee that 99% of the time that isn't the case. Yes, there's obviously a, a potential chance that you're doing a little bit too much too quick. But again, if it's kind of just manifested itself in feeling a little bit sluggish on a run, that's completely normal. However, like I said, you want to kind of uh, troubleshoot why that's happened so that you can then potentially avoid it happening in the future, such as, uh, like I said, calories, hydration, sleep. Those are the three things that I would go to first. Are you eating enough now to support your increased volume of training? Have you been drinking enough water? And especially if they are hotter conditions or more humid, have you drunk extra water or maybe added some extra uh, electrolyte drinks into your uh, meals or some? Something like that for the day and have you been getting that seven to eight hours of quality sleep per night as well if you're down on one of those straight away you can probably attribute the, the the sort of reduction in performance or the sluggish feeling the fatigue feeling down to one of those like I said in my example I had quite a, a challenging recce run um, I, I went a bit wrong the the now that I thought I was going to be able to do to make the route a certain distance, I couldn't actually get across to that particular route like I thought I could. So I had to extend the route. Therefore, I was rushing to get back for my uh, wife to finish her swim so I could make sure I was at the finish line. So I was really trying to obviously then nav on the fly. And that then meant I was just ignoring hydration and food. And I just think that I had a knock on for the next couple of days. So first of all, troubleshoot, understand why it's happened and then try and kind of come up with some strategies to make sure that doesn't happen in the future. And then the other thing that you need to then obviously consider is what to do about training. Obviously, if you go out for a run and it's just not happening because of those symptoms we've discussed, then take a rest day. There's nothing wrong with shifting that run to another day or even just dropping that particular run completely and having an extended uh, mini recovery period, like I said, a day or two of rest uh, and then come back feeling fresher in a couple of days time. You're not gonna all of a sudden lose all your fitness by skipping one run. If you're going out for a run like I was and it's just, it's not feeling right, but you're still able to just get out and do something, especially if it's planned as an easy to moderate effort run, then obviously just manage your expectations. 
go out a little bit more comfortable in terms of that pace. It might be a little bit slower than what your traditional easy to moderate effort is, like mine was in that video. Um, but that's not a bad thing. Remember, your body recognizes the, the stimulus and the stresses applied to it, not arbitrary numbers and heart rates. So as long as you're still going out at an easy to moderate effort, you're still then going to promote those aerobic changes to the body. You're still going to get blood flow and you're obviously then still going to get that volume of training and you might be trying to pursue at that point. So don't panic is the quick thing to, to respond to something like that happening. Troubleshoot why it's happened and then decide what you're going to do with the rest of the week. If you do take an extra rest day, don't try and then squeeze that run later into the week. Just accept that that particular day wasn't your day. Scratch it off move forward, look ahead to the rest of the train and then carry out the rest of the program as normal. Don't try and fit that run that you've missed in somewhere else in the week. Because remember, most programs are constructed with the right amount of rest and recovery, as well as obviously the stimulus of applying stress to the body through training. So the best thing you can do is just forget about it. Don't stress over it. It's one run. If you look back on three, four, five, six months of training, is a few runs here or there going to massively make or break your overall performance? Absolutely not. So something to consider that. So where are we at in terms of my training? Um, obviously you saw I've been out for a recce run. It didn't go as well as I'd hoped just in terms of the route, but it was good in the sense that I did the toughest climb. There were no major dramas with that. The rest of the route was nice and runnable that I did cover. Uh, I obviously then got to go and dunk myself in the lake, so that was great, and obviously got to see Jane finish her uh, Coniston end-to-end -end swim, which is five and a quarter miles, and she did it in under three hours, which was faster than what she was hoping for. So all in all, a good day overall, and obviously just chalk it up to experience in terms of the nav side of things. I just need to be a bit more better prepared. I'm now entering into the final seven weeks of training before I do my Heb uh, adventure race. Then I've got trekking in Iceland and then I'm straight into the Ambleside 50k race, which is what I've been training for. So over the next seven weeks, I've got six weeks of hitting at least 60 miles or 100k per week. So I'm focusing on volume with the odd little bit of intensity in there. And after three weeks, I'll then put in a deload week. So I'll reduce the mileage by 40 to 50 percent, then to go back to those 60 miles for a further three. So over the next seven weeks, six of those will be at least 60 miles or 100 kilometers in overall weekly volume. And then one of those weeks will be a deload roughly halfway between. And then I go into the adventure race. I'm not really then going to get much more opportunity to do running training just because I'm out for a few days for the Heb. I'm then back for one or two days before I then fly out to Iceland to do a 35 mile uh, walking route then I get back from Iceland and then I think I've got three or four days before I do the Amberside 50k so I'll just get a few shakeout runs and that's where we're at I'm feeling good I've had some good tempo training as you've seen in some of the videos I've obviously got out and done a recce and I'll do some more of those big focus now like I said is just nutritional practice and getting out on the hills a little bit more the routes behind where I live are great which you see in most of the videos however I want to just get some big climbs and some big descents in um, as I went out for a recce for the Bob Graham round with one of my coached athletes my legs were absolutely wrecked at the end of that um, last month so obviously I want to just make sure my legs are a bit more conditioned to the, the sort of the mountainous running 
and that has improved already. As you'll see in the coming clips, I've uh, been out on recce's with some of my coaching athletes for the Lakeland 50. So taking them out over the whole route over three days. And then I went out and um, supported one of my athletes on his Bob Graham attempt on leg one. So I ran the whole of leg one with him and then wait for him in Keswick to, to see him finish. He was aiming for 23 hours and he did it in 22 hours seven, which is absolutely amazing. So yeah, all in all, good, good stuff going really with the coaching side and with my own training. Show me and you to write our story on the shape that I knew. 